This week on the Computer Chronicles, Internet TV. We'll show you Web TV, a new gadget that lets you surf the web on your television set. How do you watch TV on the net? Using a technology called video streaming. We'll show you several of the best plugins. This is intercasting, Intel's approach to merging television and computers. And check this out, the first ever full-time television channel on the web. Plus a look at a new kind of TV computer, the information appliance, and the new high-speed internet highways at home and direct PC. All this and Giles Online, this week's computer news, my pick of the week, all coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by SoftSource Incorporated, publishers of Pro One Software, educational software for young adults. And by Upside, the business magazine for the technology elite. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. Well, the word is convergence, the coming together of the television set and the personal computer. And the instrument driving all of this is, of course, the Internet. And the newest system to bring the TV and the PC together is something called, appropriately enough, Web TV. Phil, you're running Web TV. They're involved in the guys who are running Web TV. Let me explain. This is just a television set, and I'm That's just right. watching TV. I'm watching a football game, but I can now surf the web on my TV set if I have just this little Web TV box here? That's correct. You just take the Web TV remote and flip right over to Web TV, just like another channel, and there you are on the Internet. All right, now what we've done here is really switch from watching television to a standard modem and a phone line and all the rest of that? That's right. It's the standard equipment that you have in your house, a normal TV from the store and a phone line that you already so have. So in your box here, you've got a modem and a CPU and just the basic stuff I need. That's right. We take care of everything for you. All right. Now, uh, I'm going here. This is the Web TV homepage. Can I do more than just that? I mean, can I surf the full net? Oh, absolutely. What Web TV provides is a front end to the Internet, and we can go wherever we want. For example, I can go to my favorites by moving the selection and then clicking through mm -hmm. to favorites. And then, for example, I could go to the Computer Chronicles homepage. And this is your home page. You designed it for a PC right. uh, with a standard browser. But we've done a lot of work to so make it. So you've enlarged the fonts a bit so it works better on the television set. Exactly, and laid it out well so that it fits within the bounds of the and TV. And it's TV, so I might be you know, 10 feet away sitting on a sofa somewhere. It really is the couch potatoes user mm -hmm. interface. All right, what about email? Can I do email as I would with a normal Internet account? Absolutely. If you get Web TV, you automatically get a first-class Internet email address, and it's incredibly simple to use. All right, uh, suppose I just want to go find a URL. How do I do it with just a remote control in my hand? Well, there are a couple ways to do it. The easiest way, if you already have the remote, is to bring up our options bar, which looks like the options on the bottom of your TV. Mm -hmm. We can use the go to option. And with the remote control, we can bring up an on screen keyboard. And say I wanted to go to CNN, for mm -hmm. example, I would type CNN. And you'll see when I actually go to that page, it will fill out the rest of the URL for me and then go to CNN and I'm right there. Right. Now, if it's a longer URL or something very long, say, mail that I want to type, there's also an optional wireless keyboard that I can okay, use. Okay, which you have over there, so I can just type in stuff. All right, now, I don't have any hard drive. I don't have any storage. That means I can't download things. How do I solve that problem? Well, you have storage. It's just not right with you. It's actually up in the Web TV network, and you have storage where it's very inexpensive, and you can keep uh, all the mail and all of your, your favorite places and all of your preferences that you want, but it's kept by Web TV. So you allocate to me a couple of megabytes or whatever of space on your server somewhere, so I do have storage. That's correct, and you don't have to worry about having a very expensive storage near you. Briefly, Phil, what's it cost me to buy this, and what's it cost me for the service? Well, Sony and Philips are both making Web TV uh, products, and it's, they're right around $300. The service is $19.95 a month, flat rate. Great. Thank you very much, Web TV. All right, the argument over convergence is about whether PC smarts will be added to television sets or TV capability will be added to PCs. Well, if you add PC smarts to a television set, you need an operating system, and that is the new business of a company called Diba. At the recent Comdex computer trade show, there were some new hardware devices that were smarter than they first looked. The Proxima projector, for example, connects directly to the Internet without a PC. And there's NASDAQ. This internet telephone from Panasonic is ready to retrieve and display electronic mail messages at the touch of a button. There is no computer to boot up and no email software to load. To open a message, you hit return key on the keyboard or hit select up there. 
The common technology behind these internet-savvy appliances is the Diba Corporation's Application Foundation. Diba's platform brings computer abilities and the internet to everything, from telephones to television sets. Diba's goal is, simply, simplicity. First, you have to not think about things in terms of the, the computer paradigm. You can't think about things using pull-down menus, and you can't think about things that have scroll bars. You can't think about installation and configuration. You have to think about things that work like a toaster. My father buys a toaster, brings it home, plugs it in. He knows how to use it. The Diba Enhanced Television, manufactured by Samsung, will be a self-contained unit. A PC board hidden inside the set provides internet connections and a simplified interface. Diba's common operating system opens the door to a wider range of inexpensive single-purpose devices, like this CD-ROM player for the kitchen or an electronic phone directory. I do think that the internet appliances will provide a door for a lot of people who haven't benefited from computing. For people who have found it to be a, a huge learning curve might enjoy uh, an internet appliance or someone without uh, the economic means to afford a three, four thousand dollar computer. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. The big problem with bringing TV to the web is how do you squeeze all of that data into the narrow bandwidth of today's telephone-based internet? Well, one answer is a video playback technology called streaming. David, that's what I want to talk mm -hmm. to you about. Explain what streaming does. How does that help me watch TV on the net? Streaming enables the process of downloading the video file into the browser for real-time viewing in the browser rather than through an external video player. All right, and also meaning I don't load the file and then come back later to view it. I exactly. can view it as it's coming down, exactly. theoretically. Theoretically. All right, now there are lots of different video playback, video streaming plugins out there. Go through what some of the choices are. Okay, well, for the high image quality playback, you can choose Clear Video, which has the Clear Fusion plugin. Um, the other availabilities are MPEG based systems like Vosaic, mm -hmm. Video Live, Zing Streamworks. All right, now none of these is really a standard, right? Depending on wh whose website you go to, they may be using one or another of these streaming technologies. Correct. All right, let's take a look at a couple of examples and see what the differences might be. First of all, you mentioned the Clear Fusion plugin from Clear Video. Exactly. Uh, you said the, that really focuses on good quality, and therefore you're paying the price of... A slower download time. Yeah, yeah. I, I've gone to the Miramax Video Vault right mm -hmm. now, and I've downloaded... So we're in the process of pulling this file down? Exactly. It's been downloading for a couple of minutes now. Okay. So now, even though we're calling this streaming, this is, uh, what, a couple of megabyte files. Exactly. It's still taking 20 minutes for this thing to come down. It sets up a buffer whereby the frames can play back as they're downloaded. Okay. But even though it still says we have 22 minutes to go, again, I can watch now the first couple of seconds of this clip. Mm -hmm. Could you just go back and actually play from the top and see what we've gotten so far? just so we can see the quality of this thing. People like us who are adopted the image often quality have to is face very, a lot of yeah, it's not And bad. so is the audio yeah, quality. Yeah. Mel and Nancy All right, so again, we've got the first 20 seconds or something that we're able to watch now ahead of time. Exactly. All right, let's talk about the other one. Now, you said there's Vosaic, which is a little bit on the other side. That mm -hmm. less quality, but it works faster. Exactly, exactly. It's a real-time stream, and it's served to you directly from a file server somewhere on the Internet. Okay. So where are you going now? I'm going to Vosaic's demonstration site. Okay, so to their website. And now that, that interface looks kind of neat. Yes, is, this is an inline plugin that works directly with the HTML. All right, and I've got little buttons. It looks like a VCR, right? I've got play, fast forward, rewind, stop, etc. You can fast forward and rewind the stream, <laughs> which you can't do with any other clip. All right, so we're pulling down this clip, and this is really more streaming. We're watching it as it's coming down. And it's sacrificing audio and image quality. And we can see it's a little delivery. jumpy. It's a lot jumpy. Yeah. Uh, but that's the price you pay for seeing it in real time. Exactly. All right, now, w what's the application here? I mean, is this for hobbyists? I mean, I'm not really going to sit around here for a half hour or watch some jumpy little clip in a posted stamp size window, am I? A lot of people do. You'd be surprised. <laughs> um, these are intermediary technologies, and they're more... Uh, they're used more for intranets and corporate development. Intranets, you yes. said. Yes, okay. within and a for company. For people who don't know, an intranet is? A higher bandwidth internal network right. 
where they might be using it for video conferencing or corporate meetings or stuff or like that. Or training films, that type <clears> of stuff. And, and where do you see this stuff going? I mean, is this ever going to get real? Are we ever going to get good enough at this compression technology to watch video through a phone-based web? Well, Vosaic's delivery system adapts to the network. So as soon as the network gets better, you'll have a faster frame rate and higher quality so images. So it's scalable, so it can adjust to where you are. Exactly. All right, David, thanks a lot. Thank you. Well, there are several approaches today to bringing the TV and the PC together. One strategy adds software to the television signal, and the Intel version of this new technology is called Intercast, and that's your expertise, Mariah. <laughs> so let's talk about Intercast. The notion here is the opposite of what we saw. Here we're squeezing television into the phone-based internet. You're really bringing the internet into the broad bandwidth of the television signal, is that right? Exactly. The idea behind Intercast technology is to broadcast web pages with your existing television signal to a PC. So what you're doing is stealing a little piece of the television signal bandwidth and instead of delivering audio and video, you're sending me the internet type data, right? Actually, Intercast technology uses an unused part of the television signal that uh, is partially used right now for closed captioning. So mm -hmm. it's very similar to sending closed captioning. We're just putting web pages into that signal and broadcasting them. All right, so basically, <clears throat> excuse me, what I'm going to do here is watch television only on my PC. Mm -hmm. So I have some sort of tuner card I've put into my PC, correct? Exactly. There's an upgrade kit available right now for most Pentium processor machines. It costs between $100 and $150. All right, so let's take a look now. So I'm watching TV. And what, what, we're watching QVC right now? Right now we're watching QVC. Our other partners in the program include NBC, MTV, CNN. This is right, so what, yeah, what's the benefit to me as a user of being able to do this intercast thing? Well, on QVC's programming, you can watch traditional television programming in the upper left-hand corner here and receive, in this case, more information about the item currently being sold on air. So you have access to all the information that the customer, the phone lines do if you would call to order. And you can read more about it. And you can even click here to order this information. So again, I'm watching real TV, real time, and at the same time, I'm looking at the web pages, which are supporting what's going on on television to get that background information. Exactly. The idea was to take a traditional television experience, which uh -huh. is very rich visually, and update it with the internet experience that everybody's demanding. Sure. All right, well, how about another application besides QVC, say CNN you mentioned? Okay, let's look at something that CNN has broadcast to us. And we'll just watch CNN. So you just dial up the channel for CNN. Exactly. And this is a page called the CNN Digest. It provides up to the minute news summaries of the latest news stories. This page was actually broadcast before and stored on the hard drive. So you not only get the real-time web pages coming down, you can hold on to them if you want to refer to them later or do research. Whatever. Exactly. This is a page that came down a couple weeks ago when I was watching CNN. And we can cruise through and see summaries of the news stories. If we want to get more in-depth information about a particular story, for example, this one, I can click on this link and be connected via a traditional telephone modem to more in-depth information on that particular story on CNN's website. All right, so up until now, I'm watching television, getting web pages tied to the television program, which I can't really control, exactly. but I can get off of the TV signal, click and go over to my phone modem, and really be on the web and have control again. Exactly. The idea is to use, in this case, we're using the television signal and the television programming as a guide to help you surf the internet. Right. You get the summary information and when you want to drill down on the internet you can click and immediately be connected to that information instead of trying to navigate addresses and okay. figure out now what to do. Somebody else doing this is MTV, right? Can you show us how yes. MTV is using this? So again, we would just go dial up the MTV channel. Mm -hmm. And let's look at a page that MTV sent. This is actually advertising their Top 20 Countdown program, which would give you more information about the Top 20 videos, maybe an artist's discography yeah. or a link to buy tickets to a concert. Okay, Intercast technology, thank you. Thank you. Well, as we've seen, the big restraint on net-based television is the limited bandwidth of the telephone network, so let's look at two other possible solutions. One is cable TV and direct broadcast satellites. Bagpipe player Jim Day had almost given up using the Internet for downloading software. Fed up with waiting 20 or 30 minutes to retrieve large files, he agreed to become a beta tester for the TCI at home network. At home feeds data through the same coaxial cable that provides home television service at up to 10 megabits of data per second. That's about 30 times faster than a 288 telephone modem. And the at home people says, well, this will be a lot faster than that. I said, you bet. You know, I, I was very skeptical. 
So I clicked on it to download, and I was talking to the guy, and I blinked my eyes about three times, and it said, load finished. And I said, no, 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 can't happen. I said, we must have lost connection. So I, I got on my file manager, and I clicked, and I went to my download directory, and my gosh, there was this 1.6 megabyte file sitting there on my hard drive. Cable modems solve one of the key problems facing Internet users, limited bandwidth. But the service is just now becoming available in just a few areas of the country. Satellites can also transmit lots of data at high speeds, and Hughes Network Systems claims it can offer almost every computer user an immediate boost to 400 kilobits per second. It's called Direct PC. Satellite, satellite delivery is very, very good for very, very fast speeds. And that's the whole idea of using satellites, is for broadcasting and for speed. I mean, particularly, we need a high bandwidth. In the case of DirecTV, um, DirecPC, it's available there. It's, the air is available everywhere. As long as you have a, the only requirement that we have is, do you have a clear view to the southwestern skies? Jim Day isn't concerned with future battles between cable and satellite networks. He's just pleased to have a reliable and very fast connection. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. Most futurists see a day when television will migrate completely to the web and websites will be much like today's TV channels. Well, guess what? It's already happening with something called First TV, a full-time video website. And you're the boss of all this First TV stuff, Scott. Let me ask you, how, how do you do this? We've just seen some streaming technologies which are you know, a little bit clunky, yet you're just running a television channel on the web using, using what streaming technology? We're using Vivo. Uh, Which is one we didn't talk about. That's earlier. right. It is a streaming technology that's a little different than some of the ones you profile because it doesn't require a server. Uh, it uses standard hypertext protocols. If you can serve up a GIF image, you can serve up a video. Mm -hmm. And there are no limits to the number of concurrent users, only bandwidth. And it's based on standardized codecs, compression, decompression methods. So uh, it is very easy to use, very e easy to utilize. And it penetrates firewalls, which is something we thought was important at first yeah. to be. It's also an ActiveX application which means that if you're using Internet Explorer, you come to our website, the video will start to play automatically. There's no plug-in. You don't plug have in. to download a plug-in. No. But if you're a Netscape user, you, you do have to You still have to go through that process. All right, so this is basically video on demand, right, only on the web, in which I can go on and watch what I want, when I want. That's right. right. Let's take a look at it and see how good this is. Okay, we'll go to our site and we'll select low bandwidth videos. This means 28.8 modems. So we're watching this over 28.8 modems. 28.8 right right modems. Click on any fresh click settings. This comes on automatically. The video starts right away. Video. So again, we're watching an Explorer, so there was nothing we had no to do No plug-in to configure. All right, now what, what's the content? What can I watch on First TV? We produce our own show called Fresh Click Life Online. And what's unusual about this is this is not a show produced on broadcast television and then ported over to the web. This is built specifically for the Internet in our studios. And there are multiple segments all related to the show. You don't have to watch a 30-minute show uh, in a linear fashion. So you on the left, this is want. sort of the rundown of all the content in your show. And I can watch any part of the show just like I would look at a magazine. Magazine, exactly. You it. can click on the right side to get a description of what the show is about. Mm -hmm. You can click on the left side to actually see the video. In this case, it's NetGuide, which is a show segment that deals with in interesting websites. Okay, so let's play this and see what this looks like. I'm the Z-Man. I'm in New York City at the American Stock Exchange. I'm going to talk to a couple of columnists at the Money Talk site, and it certainly does here. Now, if you're like me, you're right, not quite like sure what to do with your money. Yeah. All right, what else could we watch uh, in your fresh, co fresh click show beside the, the net guy section? Well, for instance, we have a segment called Web Wars mm -hmm. that features somebody the folks who watch Computer Chronicles might know. Paul Schindler is, Paul uh, is back. Is, he's here hosting a segment. He has a segment where he debates with Tim Haight from uh -huh. NetGuide Magazine various Internet uh, goings-on. In this case, it's politics on the web. And this is updated on a regular basis. We may update it daily or mm -hmm. weekly. As news warrants, yeah. we can update it. All right, your fresh click show is one thing, but I'm going to get a little tired of watching one show after a while. What else can I watch on First TV? Well, we hope to do more shows ourselves, but we also have independent filmmakers and videographers and desktop video artists sending us films and videos on a regular basis. Uh, we have one called Numbered by the Numbers, uh, produced by a woman in California. This is a music video about AIDS that MTV thought was too controversial to show, but we'll show it. 
So this is sort of the, the, the cable of cable in a way. I mean, this is an mm -hmm. opportunity for independent producers and filmmakers to get their stuff out where they couldn't get it on a network or any other cable station. And in 200 countries. That's great. First TV really works. Thank you. You're welcome. If you're interested in this emerging field of PC TV convergence, there are quite a few good resources out there on the web. So let's turn to our webmaster, Giles Bateman, for a look at some of the sites that are leading the way toward internet-based television. Thanks, Stuart. As we've learned, Internet TV can mean any number of things, but if you want to make sure your browser's up to speed for receiving all the latest webcasts, then you're going to want to go to Netscape's website where you can find uh, listings of all the different uh, latest plugins. Here we have uh, Apple's QuickTime uh, video conferencing, QuickTime conferencing. We also have iterated systems. This is a full listing here with links to the companies that make the different plugins. From there, you can download the plugins, plug in your browser, and you're up to speed. Now, webcasting is certainly not the only way to get in, uh, video around the Internet. There are a couple of other technologies. You can read about them uh, in Mbone, Multicasting Tomorrow's Internet, all about the Mbone. And then also, Internet TV with CUC Me, CUC Me being the, uh, the technology developed at Cornell University. Now, speaking of CUC Me, the author of this book maintains a website where you can find the latest uh, links to all the different reflectors where you can tune in for CUC Me video. And once you do, you call up your screen here and uh, bring it up in CUC Me, and you get uh, live video conferencing all over the internet. Uh, you can talk to these people, chat with them, but mainly broadcast yourself. Thanks, Giles. It's time now for our weekly summary of the latest internet and computer news. Here's this week's Random Access Report with Lori Anderson. In the Random Access file this week, IBM scientists are claiming a new milestone in hard disk storage. They've developed a drive that can hold 5 billion bits of data in a single square inch. That's roughly the text of 625 novels and is between 5 to 10 times the information stored on current disk drives. PCs using these drives could be available in two to three years. The Federal Communications Commission approved the proposed digital television standard HDTV. Also known as High Definition Television, HDTV is an all-digital TV standard that provides a movie theater sharp image and CD quality sound. This technology is far more compatible with PCs than current TV sets, allowing a further mergence of the two. A preview edition of Netscape's new communicator software has been formally posted on the company's website. The test software aims to extend Netscape's navigator software by adding richer messaging, editing, and collaboration features. The final product is due to be released at the end of March. Nintendo 64 is proving to be the fastest selling video game system in the company's history. The sale of the system averaged more than $5 million a day since its launch on September 29th. For those shoppers not able to find Nintendo 64 during the holiday rush, the company plans to ship over a half million more units over the next three months. And finally, Fortune magazine counts two computer moguls on its list of top 25 philanthropists. Microsoft CEO Bill Gates ranks third on the Fortune list with $135 million in donations this past year. And Hewlett Packard's co-founder William Hewlett placed fifth with $100 million in donations. That's it for this week's news. Back to you, Stuart. Now for my pick of the week. There is another approach to getting TV-type material on your PC that does not involve the Internet. This system uses small portions of the radio broadcast signal to send news and information to your PC through the airwaves. That means you can be plugged into the latest news, sports, financial updates, etc., without tying up your modem or your phone line. The system is called Newscatcher. This little pyramid thing here is actually the antenna. You plug it into an AC socket and then into your computer through a serial port. Then Newscatcher goes out and grabs stories per your instructions and automatically loads them up onto your hard drive. When new stories come in, you get a little icon telling you there's been an update. You can view the downloads in several formats and the software comes with this handy virtual remote control that lets you manage and even customize the information. Newscatcher stories come with hot web links, so if you want to, you can follow up on a story by clicking and logging on to an associated URL. The package includes one year's free service and a copy of Netcom Access Software and the Netscape Navigator web browser. It's called Newscatcher, and it comes from Global Village Communications.
That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. We'll be back here again next week with more of the best in computers, CD-ROM software, and the internet. If you need more information on anything you saw on today's show, just check out our website at PCTV.com. I'm Stuart Chaffe. We'll see you here next time. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by SoftSource Incorporated, publishers of Pro One Software, educational software for young adults. And by Upside, the business magazine for the technology elite. To order a videotape of this program, call 1-800-916-PCTV. Please ask for tapes by show number and title. And for more help in keeping up with the fast-changing world of personal computing, order the Chaffee Letter. Each month, Stuart writes in detail about topics covered on Computer Chronicles and includes his commentaries on the technology that directly affects how you use your computer. To subscribe or for a free trial issue, call 1-800-916-PCTV. The Chaffee Letter, your solution to information overload. <laughs>